Hello and welcome to the episode 211 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today we have the end of rock and roll nights at the Grosvenor Ballroom, two recording sessions for With The Beatles and the first assemblage of the Big Medley in Abbey Road. On the 30th of July 1960, the Silver Beatles performed at the Grosvenor Ballroom in Wallasey for the ninth and last time. Despite being again drumless, there was nothing wrong with the band itself, but the episodes of youth violence with the attending crowd, always a problem, had gradually grown worse during July. They finally got so bad that the locals filed a complaint with the authorities who intervened. Les Dodd, who managed the rock and jive nights at the venue, had little choice but stopping the more lucrative events and returning to his strict tempo jazz events, leaving the Silver Beatles without engagement for the summer. Once again, the band featured George Harrison, John Lennon, and Paul McCartney on guitar and voice, and Stu Sutcliffe on bass. One year later, in 1961, the Beatles, now with Paul on bass and Pete Best on drums, performed for the second consecutive night at the Blair Club in Liverpool. It was their third and, as it happens, the last time the band performed at the venue. Double feature on this date in 1962. The same lineup of the Beatles performed a lunchtime concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool, and then, at night, returned on the stage of the St. John's Hall in Bootle. A curiosity, teenage promoter Dave Forshaw, first encountered in episode 6 of this podcast, had changed the name of the venue into the Blue Penguin Club for the rock events he organized there. Big day on the 30th of July 1963. Starting at 10 am, the Beatles, now with Ringo Starr on drums, were at Abbey Road for the second recording session for their second LP. For the first recording session, you might want to go back to episode 199 of What A Fab Day. Anyhow, the band taped Please Mr. Postman, completed in nine takes, and then the Lennon-McCartney original It Won't Be Long, ten takes, but not completed when the session came to a stop at 1.30 pm. 30 minutes after the scheduled time. After a quick lunch, the band left the premises and arrived at the Playhouse Theatre. It was there, starting at 2.30 pm, that they recorded an interview with Phil Tate for BBC Radio's Non-Stop Pop. The programme was to be aired on the 30th of August between 5 and 5.29 pm. Having finished the interview, they recorded six songs for the Saturday Club show aired on the 24th of August between 10 am and 12 noon. The songs were Long Tall Sally, She Loves You, Glad All Over, Twist and Shout, You Really Got A Hold On Me and I'll Get You. When the show was aired, the BBC's General Overseas Service picked up and broadcast the last three songs internationally, on short waves. By 5 pm, the Beatles were back in Studio 2 of the Abbey Road Studios for a second recording session. During the next six hours, producer George Martin recorded a piano part for Money, That's What I Want. The lads remade Till There Was You in five takes and recorded Roll Over Beethoven in eight takes. They also recorded another 13 takes of It Won't Be Long. The same number of takes were needed for a Paul McCartney's original. All My Loving. The session ended at 11 pm, one hour later than scheduled. In 1964, having completed their due diligence in Sweden, the Beatles flew back to London from Stockholm, taking a flight at 3.45 pm. One year later, in 1965, the Beatles spent their day at the Saville Theatre in London, rehearsing for their forthcoming North American tour and for their first live TV appearance in more than a year, an event taking place on the 1st of August, as we will see. While in the theatre, leased by NEMS Enterprises from the 1st of April 1965, the band also gave two BBC radio interviews discussing help. 
On the 30th of July 1968, between 7.30 pm and 3.30 am, the Beatles continued their work on Hey Jude at the EMI Studios. Once again, the band only put down rehearsal takes. Trident Studios had been booked for the following two days to use their superior 8-track machine for the recording of the proper rhythm track. Producer George Martin had also booked a large orchestra for the 1st of August. Apart from the rehearsal, the session was also useful for fulfilling a promise the Fab Four had made to the National Music Council of Great Britain, filming one of their sessions to include part of the footage in a documentary about British music, produced by James Archibald. Today's session ended up in two short sections of the film, called Music, lasting about three minutes each. Since the takes recorded today only featured piano, acoustic guitar and drums, played respectively by Paul, John and Ringo, George was filmed sitting in a control room between George Martin and engineer Ken Scott. In 1969, the Beatles worked at the EMI studios between 2 pm and 2.30 am. Between 2 and 3.30 pm, you Never Give Me Your Money was mixed down into Take 14 in Studio 2. Between 2.30 and 10.30 pm, instead, the band was busy in Studio 3 recording a number of overdubs, guitars on Come Together, vocals, percussions and guitar on Polythene Pam, She Came In Through The Bathroom Window, vocals on You Never Give Me Your Money and on Golden Slumbers, Carry That Weight. After the overdubs, a long editing session was undertook to see how the various bits and pieces of the long medley could be pieced together, despite the fact that some of the songs weren't yet completed. The tentative order ended up to be You Never Give Me Your Money, Sun King, Mean Mr. Mustard, Her Majesty, Politin Pam, She Came In Through the Bathroom Window, Golden Slumbers, Carry That Weight, The End. Paul McCartney didn't like how Her Majesty sounded with rest, and instructed tape operator John Kurlander to edit it out of the mix. He promptly did so, but decided to save the recording for future reference by physically adding it at the end of the tape, about 20 seconds after the end. When the acetate of the medley was cut, by mistake Her Majesty was still there, at the end of the mix, starting with the final chord of Mean Mr. Mustard. Paul liked the result, and so he stayed where Kurlander had put it. And what better moment to thank you for your support! Without your shares, comments and donations, I sure would have a much harder time offering you this kind of content. As usual, if you haven't already, Feel free to give a look to www.simonmas.com support to find out the many ways in which you can be fab and make the difference. Now it's time to close the episode. See you tomorrow for a farewell message. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.